Hello there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right in a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. Welcome, everybody, to the Must Read Alaska show. I'm your host, John Quick, coming to you live from somewhere in Alaska. I hope everybody had a phenomenal weekend this last weekend. Man, we finally got a little bit of sun, got a little bit of rain. I have the greenest grass I've ever had in my entire life here in Alaska because, man, we've gotten a lot of rain. But I hope to have. I hope everybody's going to have an awesome fall. The Halloween is quickly coming up, and that also means election season. But we have a very special guest today, Joel, who is the executive or the managing director of the Ford Party. Now, the Ford Party is going to be interesting for folks to hear about. I think it is awesome that a, another third party has kind of been created or stepped up to maybe combat some of the long-standing political things that happen in the U.S. So I'm very excited that we get to hear from Joel today. Joel, welcome to the Must Read Alaska show. Thanks, John. It's great to be with you and always great to be talking all things Alaska. Uh, have a real soft spot in my heart for the state. Well, this is this is going to be fun. So for folks that maybe have never heard of the Ford Party, give us kind of the 30,000 foot view of how did the Ford Party come to be? How did it start? You bet. So the Forward Party, first and foremost, is building a new political party for America. I think that's a really important place to start that differentiates uh, us from perhaps a variety of other reform groups or folks who are trying to help our democracy function better or make changes. Uh, Alaskans are very familiar with some of those things uh, with the the onset of things like ranked choice voting, etc., uh, but we are building a party, and there's a very specific reason why uh, that is taking place, which is that one of the things that has to happen in our system for it to function in a healthy way is that the leaders need the right kinds of incentives uh, in order to be able to organize and advance common sense, pragmatic uh, solutions to the problems that people are facing. And right now, uh, in pretty much every place in the country, leaders are only given the two choices of running as a Republican or a Democrat. Now, Alaska has a little bit of a history of having some outliers there. Of course, you had an independent governor in Bill Walker who uh, charted that pathway and some legislators who've run as independents, uh, you know, places like Maine have seen that a little bit. But generally speaking, we live in a, a country where we are, are locked into a two-party system because there is no other vehicle for a candidate. And so if you don't want to run as one of those parties, it's going to be pretty tough uh, to be successful. And one of the reasons I've come to believe, uh, before I kind of share the history of the forward party, that you need a party and not just not just independence, is that parties do provide really important infrastructure and and processes to elect candidates. And they also provide a brand and an identity. And so that's really important uh, as you think about the future of American politics. There's many people who say, I don't like the two major parties. Um, I'm, I'm an independent minded person. Uh, but what we know about human nature is that people also like to organize and they like to be associated with groups of people that, that are similar to them. And so creating a party helps to kind of uh, bridge some of those gaps. Now, how did we come about? Uh, we had three different groups, uh, one called the Renew America Movement, which was a group of mostly former Republicans and Repu uh, disenfranchised Republicans uh, that included people like uh, New Jersey Governor Christy Whitman, uh, former Congressman David Jolly, Miles Taylor, who came out of the, the Trump White House, uh, Evan McMullen, uh, who's a good friend of mine, who was a former Republican who was run as an independent. Then you had the Serve America movement, um, which was mostly independents, kind of a centrist group, uh, whereas Renew America was more center right. Uh, and then you had the forward party, Andrew Yang's uh, group. Andrew had run for president uh, as a Democrat and uh, had amassed a huge following and really a grassroots movement around his ideas um, in the presidential election. And they were more, more left leaning. And so we were all in a room together in New York City uh, in, in December of 2021, along with a few other groups, just kind of talking about what could we do together? Could we collaborate in any way to help uh, our democracy be more healthy? 
And somebody raised their hand and said, why don't we merge and create a new party? And uh, that kicked off about a nine month process of figuring out, well, what would it look like to merge three political organizations, which is merging anything is hard. Merging three political organizations is extra hard. And uh, but lo and behold, after eight months, uh, we were able to to pull that merger off. And in uh, July of last year, uh, launched uh, the new forward party uh, with the goal of creating parties all around the country. That's cool. Well, congratulations on doing that. I bet that took a lot of work. Um, do you think Alaska is, you know, uniquely positioned for something like this because we have such a high percentage of nonpartisan or non-declared voters? I think it's higher. They have a, there's a higher percentage of those voters than Republicans or Democrats. Um, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Alaska, no doubt, is well positioned to see a new party emerge. I think one of the challenges, if we're honest with ourselves about Alaska's landscape, is that independence, right? There's a lot of Alaskans that I know uh, don't want to be associated with a political party, and they truly are independent. Whereas in many states around the country, people say, I'm independent, but they they do actually want to associate with someone uh, or a party. They just haven't found a party that they like. So while I think Alaska is ripe for this in the sense that there's a lot of people who are looking for a different way that's not one of the two parties to express their political views, uh, I do think one of the challenges, if we're again, if we're honest in Alaska, is is that it is a true independent streak in Alaska in ways that some states are not. Yeah, they're so independent, they don't even want to register as libertarians. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so what, what makes you different? You know, you got these two big parties, folks that are kind of in the political bubble, um, no, you got the Democrats and Republicans, right? They win 99% of the races across the U.S. What makes you all different from those two? Well, first and foremost, Forward is endeavoring to build a new kind of party, not just another copy of the way that the two parties operate currently. And that's really important because if we succeed in building state parties around the country and all we are is just another version warmed over of either the Democrats or the Republicans, we're going to see all the same kinds of problems, particularly the lack of solutions and advancement on things that people really care about. And so how do you do that? I think one of the biggest innovations that Forward is bringing to the political party conversation is the rejection of extremes while allowing for a very large container to hold a lot of different viewpoints. So what I mean by that is instead of a national platform, the Ford Party does not have a five-point platform on abortion, guns, and healthcare. Mm -hmm. The Ford Party is saying, here are the, the national set of values and principles that we share uh, as forward party members. And then the state parties will determine what the priorities are for their state. And pri by priorities, we mean what are the biggest problems that need solving in your state? And so that will start to look a little bit more like a, a set of issues. But the people of Alaska, the party leaders in Alaska and the, the members of, a, of an Alaska forward party would say, this is what the biggest problems are that need to get solved in Alaska. And these are the priorities for our state party and for what we would envision for candidates running as forward to solve those problems. And then the candidates are going to say, here are the solutions that we think need to be presented to solve those problems for Alaska or for Anchorage or for Ketchikan or uh, for Juneau, as opposed to what is the current system of the two parties is here are our national prescriptive platforms and you will ab abide by these whether you like it or not. And so what that does is it stifles creativity. So Homelessness, for example, is a huge issue in both San Francisco, uh, you know, a very left leaning uh, city and across a number of cities in in Florida, which is a very Republican dominated state. There may be different ways to solve that problem. There may be uh, a, a more conservative leaning solution to that problem in a place like uh, like uh, Lubbock, Texas, for example, it's used a very red state. Uh, and in San Francisco, there may be a more left-leaning solution, and we're not prescribing that one solution to homelessness should be addressed. Uh, let's take a very specific Alaska issue, things like oil drilling, right? There may be a, a more conservative approach or libertarian approach to the questions around drilling or a balanced approach between how to, how to preserve the environment and, and be pro-business. Alaskans may have a different way of solving that problem than Texans and certainly than Californians. And so what we're trying to do is build a party that can hold those various viewpoints, but is really focused on serving the people and solving these problems. So, so you all have been at it for a little while. Tell me about, um, you know, have you all won any elections across the U.S.? My guess is yes. Tell me about some of those stories. 
Yeah, so we're a brand new political party that just launched a year ago, and people first need to understand what that means uh, before I answer your question. What that means is that at every state level, we have to establish ourselves through the legal processes prescribed by that state to be a political party and run candidates. Every state in the union literally is different. There are 50 sets of rules about how you become a political party uh, in any given state. And so in each state, we have to go through the processes. In some states, like Florida, it's quite simple. You have to have an executive committee and you file some paperwork and you're a minor party and you have a ballot line. You can run candidates. In other states, like Texas, uh, you have to have over 75,000 signatures from voters who didn't vote in the previous primary. You only have a three month window to collect them. So it's it's a <laughs> that's a, a that's a big, big hoop to jump through. Yeah, enormous hoop. Um, Alaska is is kind of uh, on the easier side of that. But um we can't run candidates on the Florida on the uh, forward ballot line until we have a ballot line mm -hmm. uh, that that state recognizes. So in Florida, we have candidates running in this cycle. This would be the first cycle that forward party candidates are running. Um, and that's one way that we envision ourselves uh, advancing candidates. But where we have seen tremendous progress is in what we call forward affiliates. Uh, and those are existing Democrats or Republicans or independents who are already in office who say, I really like the way that forward is doing things and I want to be a part of that. And I'm going to call myself a forward Republican or a forward Democrat or a forward independent. And we're seeing that happen already. We've seen state senators in Pennsylvania, sitting state senators, Anthony Williams and Lisa Boscola, both affiliated as forward Democrats. Uh, we've seen folks uh, on the Republican side at the at the local level affiliate as forward Republicans. Uh, we've also seen candidates switch parties in places like Florida, where we have about line my own mayor of Newberry, Florida, uh, switched parties and became a forward party mayor. And so there's ways to engage with elected officials, even here in our first year. And we're up over 30 years already just in, in really a concerted effort. It's only been going on for about six months. But the kind of the first six months was just launching, getting out there, getting organized, building our ground roots and we're all we've already seen over 30 people either affiliate or switch parties and as we head into the 2024 cycle uh, our goal is to get over 300 uh nationwide uh, by the end of the cycle nice so you're making progress um do you think you know a lot of local elections you know i'm talking local local like let's say you know like a fire service board or even below a city council like a city city planning commission a lot of those um um, races are run uncontested. Just one person throws their name in the hat or or no people. And then, you know, mayor has to appoint somebody. Is that somewhere where you see the Ford party being involved in, you know, kind of that low hanging fruit of local, 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 local races that maybe the Republican party and the Democrat party, the big party doesn't really care about? Yeah, John, that's a big part of what we're trying to do is look at uncontested races, even unfilled offices. Uh, people would be surprised perhaps to know that there are thousands mm -hmm. of unfilled seats across the country uh, where, where no one even runs. And and oftentimes those are those smaller local offices uh, that that remain unfilled. And so that's one way that we're looking at filling seats with forwardists is, is where are those unfilled seats? And, and then the other one is to look at those uncontested seats that no one's paying attention to um, and to run them at the local level. That's awesome. So my guess is you get to travel, talk to people all over the U.S. Um, and, you know, hear their stories. You know, what are what are folks saying, you know, as you're listening to them, as you're hearing them, are they happy with our current political atmosphere? Or are they ripe for a change? Well, it will come as no shock to your listeners uh, because many of them probably feel the same way. People are very, very frustrated and are looking for a new way. Uh, data continue to tell us this uh, almost across every spectrum of survey work, whether you're looking at the, the Pew surveys that are done often or whether you're looking at kind of the standard political surveys that the major TV networks do. Uh, we just continue to see a growing number of Americans saying, I want something different. I want a new party. I want a new way. I, the two parties don't represent me. Uh, and I, in fact, believe it's now a plurality of the of the United States, the people who say, like, I don't belong to one of those two parties. That's not who I am. And they're looking for a different way. And one of the th ways that the forward party is stepping into that is to create a new tribe and a new brand, a new way to identify who you are politically that rejects the extremes, 
focuses on on putting power back in the hands of the voters and the people uh, and and creates a, a situation where the infrastructure and the support that is necessary to be a successful candidate in American politics is also present uh, while not again recreating the same mistakes that we've seen in the two parties. Yeah, I think a lot of times when I, you know, as I talk to people on this show, whether it's maybe before the show or after the show, a lot of folks that I chat with, they, <clears throat> there's a lot of people center right, a lot of people center left, a lot of people center, and they're, but the extreme right and left seem to take up all of the oxygen in the room. And so is it fair to say that the Ford Party is trying to bring some common sense back into politics? I think it's fair to say common sense, but also a a shared idea that even though you may disagree and come from different political perspectives, there are actually thoughtful solutions to the problems that our country or our state or our city or our town or our neighborhood are facing. And we don't have to let every single decision slip into this partisan extremism um, where actually nothing gets done and it's only the the fringes that are arguing about uh what should be done and so i think it's not that we're trying to occupy even a left right spectrum what we're trying to do is say that uh in this radically pluralistic country that we live in uh, there are a variety of thoughts about how you solve a given problem and we're not always going to agree on those things but there is currently no political party that makes space for that conversation to happen. And that's one of the unique things that Forward is doing. So this is, a, you know, some would say this is an impossible fight. Why why even try or do this? I mean, um, it's, you got to have a certain amount of like passion or calling to do something like this. Why put up, why go against the two biggest Goliaths in the room? Well, I won't speak for my many colleagues and and the many hundreds of thousands of people around the country who have already joined us. They can speak for themselves as to why they're uh, believing that forward is a, is the right kind of angle. For me personally, I've been in what I call the new politics space since 2016 when I left the Republican Party and became an independent. Uh, I've run a ton of independent campaigns and I've seen how hard it is for people who don't fit in the two major party system to compete. Um, and I think that our country is so hungry for something different that if we don't provide a vehicle for that, it's not going to survive and thrive. And, and that is what Forward is doing, is creating a vehicle, an actual entity to help those who reject the extremism uh, to be successful. And yes, it is very, very hard, but uh, for example, uh, my good friend Lee Drutman, who writes about this uh, a lot, uh, and he has a book called The Two-Party Doom Loop, um, and he is of the mind that we are entering into what he would call a fourth uh, political era in American history. Uh, he would hearken back to the creation of the Republican Party as the entrance into the, the third, uh, which happened in the 1850s, when you saw a coalition of people breaking off of the Whigs. Uh, slavery was the issue of the day. You had Whigs, conscience Whigs, abolitionists, uh, free soilers, this kind of uh, motley crew coalition of people who came together and a new party was born around these core uh, values, not around a, a shared agreement on every single issue or even how uh, certain problems should be solved, but that there was a recognition that something in the country was broken and, and it had to be fixed. Uh, you know, unfortunately, the reckoning part of the reckoning came through the Civil War. Uh, I certainly am hopeful that we're not going to see that, but but the the history remains true that uh, things don't change until they do, and and so you know why why am I doing it? Number one, I'm passionate about it. I think we have to have this in our country. I think people desperately want it in our country, but very specifically and tactically, I think the time is right. Uh, and if if no one is working on building the infrastructures and the tools and the community that is going to be necessary for this movement as it emerges, um, then it's possible that the moment could come and there's nothing to catch it. And so I think it's absolutely worth doing the work now. Nice. Well, people are going to listen to this. They're going to want to check out the Ford Party. Um, what's the best way for folks to check you all out? I'm sure you have websites and social media and stuff like that. but how can people find out more information? 
Yeah, go to forwardparty.com and enter your email and your location, and you'll be contacted by state leaders in your state. We have leaders in all 50 states uh, who are wanting to see this happen. In fact, I just talked to a guy who moved from Pennsylvania to Alaska in the last two months and is really, he was one of our state leaders in Pennsylvania. He's from Alaska originally. He's really excited about getting involved in the state party there. And there's others who are already uh, leading and laying the groundwork for what will ultimately become uh, the forward party of Alaska. So sign up uh, on the website, forwardparty.com and uh, you'll, you'll be contacted. Nice. Um, last question to you is this, Joel, why do you think something like this hasn't been successful in the past you know there's been there are other third party kind of organizations out there i think i don't ross pro i think ran as a, a independent you know but he got 19 million votes he was probably the guy out you know the guy that got the most amount of votes in our recent history that was not of the two parties why do you think something like this hasn't caught on yet is it just timing as you said you think no, I actually think there's some very specific reasons why previous third party efforts have failed. I think there are first and foremost structural reasons. The system is not built for third parties to succeed. The two parties agree that they want to keep all competition out. And, and every state has some layer of rules to make it very difficult for competition to emerge. So I think there's the systemic problems. And some of those are being addressed through reforms. Alaska's seen some reforms recently that begin to help open that opportunity up. But then I think the, the more practical lesson for those building a new party, and, and we're trying to take this, uh, those of us who are helping build forward, is that those previous efforts have, have been too narrow. They've either been narrowly defined around ideology, as with the Green Party or the Libertarian Party, very specific set of ideas and, if, and kind of a purist approach, quite honestly. And if you don't fall in that spectrum, then you're you're not going to feel comfortable in that party. Or uh, alternatively, as, as with Ross Perot, centered around a personality. And so you've seen, for example, other people try to run similarly at, as, as presidential candidates like Ross Perot. Uh, you know, Howard Schultz explored it briefly. Mike Bloomberg ran. Uh, people who have money and means. Um, but then it's really centered around that personality. And what happened with the Reform Party with Ross Perot is it fell apart after he kind of exited the scene. They couldn't keep it going because it was so centered around Ross and his ideas. And so we're trying not to, to recreate that problem and trying to really build a broad-based coalition, state by state, long-term, viable, durable, and credible that is uh, representative of the people. That's awesome. Well, uh, 25 minutes has gone by in a flash. Any last minute things here before we head off? Really well, appreciate sure. you having me on. Uh, really appreciate you having me on, John. And uh, I'm hoping that the people of Alaska will continue their amazing independent streak um, by gathering together and saying we've had enough of uh, the broken two party system. We want to be a part of something different, and the forward party can provide that vehicle. Uh, so, really glad to uh, to spend some time. And thanks again for having me. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for listening in. If you just caught the tail end of this, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to the whole thing. You'll get a hear of a third party that's emerged here in the U.S. I think it's always good to have competition. I'm a registered Republican, but I love the fact that the forward party is out there stirring things up. I love it. Got some great folks involved in it. And uh, man, I wish you I wish you success. I know that you've you probably have it. So uh, we, you're invited anytime back on the Must Read Alaska show. And uh, folks, I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to check out the forward party uh, It'll be in the description. You can check it out for yourself. Until next time, I'm John Quick from somewhere in Alaska.